Hello and welcome. In case we've never met before, my name is Maggie. I'm a graphic novel artist who lives in Edinburgh. And ever since I was a teensy weensy little girl, I've been obsessed with documenting my life. Nothing spectacular happens in it. It's a very average life. Uh, there's two cats, a lot of cloudy weather, rain all of the time, and a lot of really subpar food that I make and somewhat acceptable art that I create. I'm truly selling this video that you're about to watch, hopefully. My cats are fighting in the background. Just know that they're literally off camera right there. Today's video is a collection of what I would say are the best happiest moments of the last two weeks. I've taken a lot of inspiration for today's video from East Asian creators who vlog in this type of faceless style where it almost feels like you're in a FaceTime call with your best friend and you're both just kind of carrying on with life but you're there for companionship anyway and I hope this video feels that way. There's a lot of drawing, there's also a lot of experimenting with sketchbooks and art materials, there's a lot of hanging out in Edinburgh trying out new foods, going to the museum, a lot of reading. I'm trying to really hit my reading goal for this year. Um, and I think I'm about to do it early, which is great. So I hope I've managed to document the final days of September in a good, calming, relaxing, cozy way that both of us can enjoy. Now, without further ado, this is the intro to the video over and I'm gonna hand you off to past me, who I think was just beginning her work day with graphic novel work. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be right back on the other side to say goodbye. So I'll be back.
like super pretty. This one's going straight on my back.
now get ready for Castle Airbnb. <laughs>
And so this video concludes. Before I close off today's video, I actually had a couple of questions from our digital friends over on YouTube and Instagram that I wanted to address because it's been a while since I asked them. I'm not a timely girl. The first question was, how do you approach graphic novels? And the answer to that is with a lot of consideration. I've worked on graphic novels with Penguin Random House US, Buffin UK, HarperCollins, Oxford University Press. So believe me when I tell you, it takes a lot of consideration whether to accept a project or not. Just by design, graphic novels are very labor intensive pieces of work. Unlike a board book or a picture book or a chapter book where there's a mixture of spot illustration, full pages and double spreads. With graphic novels, there's nothing but full page spreads and the average length of a graphic graphic novel is 192 pages, at least in the genre and age ranges that I work in, which means that I have to create roughly 200 pages in a timeline that is on average less than a year roughly nine to 10 months for sketches through to final work and all corrections. And on top of this, something else to consider is that if you want to be a full-time artist, chances are you're working on multiple projects at the same time. So you're not just working on one graphic novel, finishing that and then starting the next one. You're working on two, three, four at the same time, just as I'm currently working on three for three separate publishers in three separate countries. <laughs> Break that down as you will. An average day in my current schedule looks something like doing three to four sketched pages from book one, a little bit of cat fur in my face there, correcting five pages of color work for graphic novel two, and then revising sketches roughly five pages a day from graphic novel number three. And that's only going to increase because the sketch in the inking phase is the fastest going one. Once you get to the color, there's no cutting corners. It's the final piece of art. So you have to be very detailed and very mindful and very concentrated. And it takes a lot of time. So this is a mild version of a day in the life. My top tip for approaching graphic novels is evaluate your schedule. Make sure you have space for the work that you're taking on. At the end, it's an incredibly beautiful reward to be able to hold something that you made, but the road to getting there is an intensive one. So a lot of mindfulness, a lot of consideration for time and effort and labor. The second question, this one came from Instagram, was how do I find inspiration? How do I find stuff to draw? I recently had a big bout of artist block, so I feel uniquely qualified to talk about this currently. <laughs> if I'm stumped for subjects, I will draw anything around me. Like today, for example, I made Italian wedding soup, which is gonna be a part of the next vlog. And I was making it and I was thinking about October, which by the way, is right around the corner. And I was thinking to myself, wow, I don't have pieces ready for the month of October. Why don't I just illustrate this soup recipe? You've already seen this in this vlog, but the other day I went to the museum and I got these animal cards randomly. I just saw them on a shelf and I thought, fantastic. If I'm stumped for a subject, I'm gonna draw, and I do wanna do this as a challenge at some point in the future. Draw a random card, draw that animal. Sometimes I'll ask the internet to help me out with the question function on Instagram. I'll be like, tell me what to draw and I'll draw it. So yes, number one, I'll draw anything that's in my immediate proximity, whether that's a soup, recipe. If I'm watching something, I'll try and do fan art or character art. If I'm drinking a coffee, I might, do a little illustration of myself and my current outfit with my coffee. So draw something that you see in your immediate direction. Number two, go to thrift shops, go to charity shops, go to museums and actively seek out weird random subjects. There's so many books in charity shops that are like reference materials for kids. Grab one, open a random page and just go to town. You don't always have to be inspired. As an artist who works with us full time, sometimes you're just all drawn out. <laughs> it's not always going to be a mock cover for a middle grade fantasy novel. Sometimes it's just random little bits that I see around me, like an ink pot. And then, do you know what? Put a dog on it. I'm hoping that these were somewhat helpful. I don't know if I'm the best at answering questions, but if you have any, drop them down below and I will address them in the next video. I've really been enjoying making these and I'm hoping to stick with it. Anyhow, I hope this little microphone works and you can hear this whole thing, but I'm not sure. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it's been somewhat cathartic and cozy and nice and informative towards the end. I hope you have an incredible day and I'll see you guys in two weeks time for the next video. Um, farewell. Hope you have a lovely time. Bye-bye.